And this goes for everybody. I will be recording every lesson, every thing. So anybody can go back and watch the lesson on YouTube. Your parents have the, um, your parents have my YouTube channel account. So you, you can log on, like say you're doing your homework and you're a little confused about what I talked about or you remember me saying something but you can't, you can't quite bring it up, you can't quite get it in your mind. You can actually go on YouTube and you can rewatch the lesson if you want. And you don't even have to rewatch the whole lesson because you know on YouTube you can like skip around, you can fast forward, you, can, you don't have to watch the whole thing. But you can actually go back or when you're studying for the test and you're like this lesson I was really confusing. I've got the rest of it, but this one lesson I'm really having trouble with. Well, you can go back and watch that video because I will be videoing unless something goes on. I have the computer with Zoom for Zari and Smith and Carla, I think. And then I have an iPad recording the lesson. So I'll post it every afternoon on YouTube unless something crazy happens. Um, so you'll have, you'll be able to go back and watch, especially girls at home. Like say your um, internet is acting funny or your computer's acting funny or something or it kicks you off or something and you can't get back on for whatever reason or say the internet here is doing something weird, the lesson will be recorded so that you can go back and watch it later. It's also really good because if you are out, like say you have a doctor's appointment, say you have a cold, say something like that is going on, well, you can watch the lesson. You can still watch the lesson. Even if you can't that day, you can go back and re-watch the lesson and actually do it with us on YouTube. So that'll be really helpful. Even if all this wasn't going on, I think I'm going to do that from now on. Okay, um, let's see. So today we're just going to talk about math rules and procedures. Um, we're not going to start math today. So with math, it's kind of the same as last year where you... Um, where Miss Cook projected the math book on the board, and then we worked through it together. Hold on one second, I'm getting a call. I'll be right back. be projecting the board the um, math book on the board you'll have the math book in front of you of course that way you know exactly where I am you see it unfortunately we probably won't I'm trying to figure out a safe way for people to come work it out on the board there might not be a safe way but you guys will still help me because you'll be if we can't write on the board you'll be the one telling me the steps and then I will just write what you tell me to do Okay, um, and then after that, so we'll do the examples together. Then we'll do guided practice where you guys will help me to do it. And that's what I was just talking about a second ago. Um, you will help me do the guided practice and then we'll get to the independent practice. And that will be all on your own. Zari and Smith, if you feel comfortable with the lesson, you don't have any, you don't think you'll have any questions, you can go ahead and log off or you can stay with us during the um, independent practice. And if I'm not in front of the classroom, like um, say I'm at my desk helping people, or I'm at, um, I'm helping kids at their desks, you can just say, you can unmute yourself, say, Miss Follis, this is Smith, this is Zari, I have a question, and then I'll come and help you. I might bring you to my desk, maybe, we'll see. I'll figure that out because um, you're just on my laptop. So any questions about that so far? That's the kind of the order of math. We do the examples. Well, we do a little introduction. We do examples. Then we do, um, then we do guided practice, which you will help me with. And then we do, you do independent practice on your own. You can, of course, ask me for help. Um, the kids, at, the kids on Zoom, you know what to do. Just say, Miss Follis, I have a question. Or Miss Follis, this is Zari, this is Smith, I have a question. Kids at school, you will make sure there is nobody at my desk. 
You will put your face shield on, make sure your mask is up and above your nose, and then you can come to me and I will help you at my desk. But you have to make sure that nobody is there and you have to make sure that you bring your pencil and your book and you put your mask on, make sure it's all the way up above your nose and your face shield and I will have both on as well. Does anybody, any questions about that? Zari. Um, what if you don't have your math book yet? That's okay. Mm, okay. I should, I can scan it and then I'll email it to your mom. Okay. Until you get it. Smith, do you have yours? Smith, do you have your math book? Okay, cool. And anybody here that does not have their math book? I will make copies until you get it. But this goes, let's see, Zari, Aaron, and Kingston. Once you get your math books, you will copy what was on those sheets into your math book. So all you have to do is copy it. Does that make sense? Okay, yes, Aaron. I don't know why that one's going off. Oh, because I accidentally said a snooze instead of turning the alarm off. I gotta turn the snooze off. I should get it soon because it did get it, it got shipped. Got shipped yesterday. Ooh, cool. It would be awesome if it came today, like this afternoon. It probably won't, but that's okay. But that just means you have less to copy. Zari, has yours been ordered? It's just not here yet. Yeah, mine has been ordered. It's just not here yet. Okay, this always happens with the math books. I don't know what's going on with that company, but every single year, Kingston, has yours been ordered yet? Do you know? You don't know. Okay, I'll reach out to your mom. Okay, so last year, I told some of you yesterday, last year you tore pages out. Oh, here comes Carla. Hold on one second. Good morning, Carla. Well, she might not be able to hear us yet. Let's see. Still connecting. Once it connects to audio, we can all say hello to her. Let's see. Yeah, she might not be able to hear us either until she's connected. Let's see, any questions while Carla's connecting? Um, no. <laughs> you don't have to think up questions. Can you hear us? She probably can. Because I think until it says that she's connected to audio, she won't be able to hear anything. Yeah. Okay, good morning, Carla. Good morning, Carla. Hello, Carla. Okay, so right now, um, Carla, can you go ahead and mute yourself? Do you know how to do that? Um, yes. I okay. See. There you go. And then, Carla, if you have a question for me, just wave your arms, and then I'll say, yes, Carla, or I might say, I'll get you in a minute, Carla, and then unmute yourself, and you can ask the question, and then just make sure to mute yourself again. You got that? Awesome. Okay, so we're talking about math right now. Um, we just talked about how math is gonna work. It's gonna work pretty much the same as last year, where we have, uh, we'll project the math book on the board. We'll do um, the, an introduction that I will do. Examples will be mostly me, but I'll get a little bit of help from all you guys, which I forgot to say a minute ago, so I'm glad I had to say that again. And then guided practice will be you guys telling me the steps. And I'll be writing as you guys tell me the steps. I have a stick cup. Everybody's number is in this stick cup. I've had these, this is, I've been using these the whole time I've been in IC. So like right now, I picked the number seven. You guys do not have numbers yet, but you will. I will tell you, Zadie, you are officially number one. That's not changing. Michaela, you are officially number two. That's not changing. 
Uh, Aaron, you are officially number three. That's not changing. It's just the rest of you. I'm waiting on a little bit more information. I'm seeing if Mason is coming back. Because I like to have it in alphabetical order. But if I don't hear, then we'll just assign him a number and then we just won't have that number. It'll be the number four. And if he comes, we'll have a number four. If he doesn't, we won't have a number four. But I just want to wait. By Monday, you'll have your numbers. Does everybody understand the numbers? Okay. So I will pick a number, and then that person will help me. If you are still confused, I will, of course, help you through it. Like, I will prompt you. But the math book, I really like this math book because it tells you step by step what to do. It just tells you. So yes, guided practice will be done together in that way, and then independent practice will be on your own. Carla, if you are comfortable with the lesson and you feel like you really don't need, you're not gonna need any help with the independent practice, you can log off then. If you think you might have questions, you can stay logged on for the independent practice. Um, or if you just wanna hang out with us, you can stay on the, um, the Zoom. Um, I am recording every single lesson we do. So if you have to miss it, or if you run a little late, or if you were confused about something, you can rewatch the lesson on YouTube. Um, I think that's all I said. Does anybody remember anything else that I might need to tell Carla that I said before she got on? Sorry? Um, if you can find a um, safe way, then you'll make sure that it's very safe. Yes, exactly. Always. For the kids at school to come up on the board, but I'm not sure if I will. We'll um, see. I got two. Victoria. Wait, I just forgot one. Um, but if you're not, like, if she can't see you on the computer, like, you're back here in the class, you unmute yourself and... Yes. If you have a question, so Carla, if you have a question and I'm not in front of the computer... You can, um, like I'm not in the screen. You can unmute yourself, say, Miss Folis, this is Carla, I have a question. And then if once I'm done helping, you'll be able to hear me even though you can't see me, I'll say, okay, I'll be with you in a second, Carla, or like if I'm helping somebody, or I will come up and I will help you. I might bring you to my desk, we'll see, I'm not sure yet. Because I have to keep it plugged in so that it doesn't die before the end of the day. Okay, so now new information. Carla, are you good on all that? Awesome. Okay, new information, which some of you I told, I think maybe the kids who were here yesterday I might have told, I don't know. Last year and the year before, and maybe the year before that, I don't know, you tore pages out of your math book. Like you tore the lessons out. We do not do that in fourth grade. Everything stays in the book except for homework and, um, check my progresses and reviews. Those are the only things that get torn out. Do not tear the lessons out. Be really careful so that the lessons don't accidentally get torn out because that to me is the best way to make sure that everything stays together and that it doesn't get lost and then you have nothing to study for the test from. Does everybody understand that? Do not tear anything out of the math book except for homework, check my progresses, and reviews. Okay, so with math, there will be lots of times where you need an extra sheet of paper because your math book doesn't necessarily have enough room or, um, there's, or something like that. So on independent practice, sometimes your math book does not have enough room to do it neatly. I am big on neatness. If I can't read it, then I can't grade it. If you can't read it, then you can't study from it. So, I found these at Target and I'm so excited because I used to draw them. This is a sheet of paper. It's a giant dry erase sheet of paper. Can you guys see it okay at home? I know it's kind of hard, but hopefully we will remedy that soon. So, if you are showing work on a separate sheet of paper, for independent practice, which I will go over this again when we get there. You will get out a sheet of paper, and at the top, you will write page two through four. Then, you will do your work. 
So number two, say you need to do 126 plus 342. You will show it on that piece of paper. Do the math, six plus two is eight, two plus four is six, one plus three is five. And then in your math book, you'll write the answer, okay? We won't always need a separate sheet of paper for the independent practice, but there are quite a few times where we do. There's just not enough room to do it neatly, which means it's really hard to study from. Then I will come around at, home, at school, I will come around and I will staple it into your math book the next morning. Because the way that I check independent practice is the next morning when you come into school, you open your math book to the first page of the independent practice. And then I check, I go over it. If I notice any mistakes, I will circle it. You will rework it. I will come back to you. If I see that it is completely finished, it is done correctly, I will check it. And then you may close it, put it away, or just leave it open for math later on. Okay? When I come around to check, that is when I will staple this into your math book. I will have my mask and my face shield on so you don't have to worry. I will also ask you to have your face shields on while I check math. I will also be checking reading log at the same time, but we'll talk more about that during the reading time. So that is when I will staple your extra sheet of paper into your math book. Okay? Homework. If you need a separate sheet of paper, you will just use a separate sheet of paper. You don't have to write this, but everything else will look the same. You will number it. You will keep it neat. No little bubbles all over the place. Ethan, make sure you're paying attention. No little bubbles all over the place. Like don't do number two here, and then number three here, and then number four here. Because then I can't find your work. So make sure that you are numbering it and that you are doing it neatly. So if I was doing math for homework, I don't need the page numbers. And then I would say, OK, number three, 489 plus 162. Then I would show my work. OK, 9 plus 2, 11, carry the 1. 8 plus 6 is 14 plus 1, 15. 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 5. Oops. Six, and then I would write my answer on my homework in the spot provided. Sometimes there will be enough room on your homework to show it, but I will tell you during the lesson. I will tell you when, ooh, when we finish the lesson and I tell you to tear out your homework and put it in your, uh, in your take home folder or to tear out the homework and put it to the side wherever you're putting your homework. I will say you need a separate sheet of paper Put a separate sheet of paper in your folder right now. So you will know when you 100% need a separate sheet of paper, there will be times where I say, if you write big, you might need a separate sheet of paper. Or if it makes it easier for you, you can use a separate sheet of paper. There will be some times where there's really not any work to show. So you will know when you 100% need a separate sheet of paper. Does everybody understand? Is everybody with me? Any questions? Aaron, Ethan, any questions? Or are you good? Okay, remember, show me. Thank you. Okay. Now, let's see, I think that's it. Uh, kids at school, your homework. In the morning, when you turn it in, you will make sure there's nobody by the homework tray. Do not touch anything over there. All you need to touch is your homework. And then you're going to place it in the math tray. The math tray is the top black tray with the yellow border. On the side of the trays, it tells you what it's for. So all math homework, don't forget to include your separate sheet of paper. Normally you would staple it, but this year I do not want you to staple it because I don't want you to touch the stapler. Um, yes? Do we write our name on the separate sheet of paper? Yes. This year you do need to write your name on the separate sheet of paper just in case it gets yeah, uh, mixed up. Normally you wouldn't because it's attached, but because... If you have a stapler at home, go ahead and staple it. You staple it in the top right corner. If you have a stapler at home, you can go ahead and staple it in the top right corner. The work, the extra sheet of paper, goes behind the homework page. Don't staple it to the front. The homework page goes in the front. 
the extra sheet of paper goes in the back. If you have a stapler, you staple it in the top left corner. At home, you will not, you will not turn it into the tray, obviously. You don't even need to um, staple it. Because what you're gonna do is your parents, or you if you know how to, will scan the front and back of your homework page. They can scan it or they can take a picture. If you have an iPhone, the Notes app has a scanner. Um, if you don't have an iPhone, if, the, if you have a smartphone, I'm sure there's some kind of app that you can use to um, scan a piece of paper. It's like taking a picture of it, but it only picks out the paper. So I'm sure there is one, and then you will, your parent will scan the front and back of your homework and your extra sheet of paper. If it's front and back, both sides, if there's more than one, all of it. And then they can email it to me, which I will tell them with your name, the, um, the word homework, and then the, either the date or the page numbers, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to decide that right now. And they can do that as soon as they're done, as soon as you're done with it. Because I am expecting it, unless there's an emergency, which your parents will email me and let me know, I, I will be expecting it by the next morning. Like, I'll be checking my email. Um, I will expect it by, it's like the kids here, by before 8.15 the next morning. Okay? Is everybody good on that? Okay. Um, independent practice, they'll do the same thing. It'll say your name, independent practice, and either the pages or the date. I'll figure that out. Probably the date but I'll figure that out. Again, by 8.15 the next morning. Okay, all homework, all independent practice. I will be expecting a, um, a document with that on there by 8.15 the next morning, unless there's an emergency, which your parents will notify me of. And that goes for everybody else. All homework must be turned in by the time we start, by the time announcements start. Does everybody understand? If homework is late, for the first quarter, it will be minus one point for every day that it's late. So whatever your final grade is, if it is late, I'll take off one point for how many days. So if it's five days late, you're gonna lose five points. Once we get to the second quarter, it goes up to two points per day that it's late. Once we go to the third corner, quarter, in the second semester, it is five points off for every day that it's late. Make sure that you get your work done. For independent practice, if you do not finish it at school, you should have time to finish it at school between uh, the end of the lesson, like between the, from me finishing guided practice until the end of our designated math time. And then of course you will also have the academic choice time between your special and lunch. You, that you can work on it too if you don't finish. Most kids do finish most, if not all of it, during the math time. Um, sometimes it's just like the last two or three questions that don't get finished. We do the hot problems in the math book. For those the critical thinking ones, we start right away doing them. Mm -hmm. We do every single independent practice. The last question is always a critical thinking question. That comes from your brain. That means that when you are working on that and you don't understand, you need to read it, read it again, and then read it a third time. If you're still confused after that third time of reading it about what it is asking, you can come to me and ask me, or at home, you can, um, if you're staying on the Zoom during the independent practice, you can say, Ms. Phyllis, I have a question. If you are off of Zoom when you get to that point, you can email me, or I will probably give your parents my number so that you can FaceTime or um, Skype or even just send a text. I have a question. You will have that option up until like 5 p.m. So that means you need to make sure at home that you finish independent practice before 5 p.m. Does everybody understand? Okay. If you do not finish independent practice at school, then you do need to finish it at home. That goes for every subject. If independent practice does not get finished at school, it needs to be finished at home. If it is not finished at home and you come in the next morning and your independent practice is not finished, for kids at school, that's five minutes of silent lunch, five minutes no recess, whatever our recess looks like. Does everybody understand? 
That is an automatic consequence. At home, if it is not finished, I'm gonna have to figure out what the consequence is because you won't be with us for recess or lunch. But just make sure that you get it done by 8.15 the next morning. Okay, does everybody understand? Yes. Okay, anything else? Smith, do you have a question or were you just doing this and I caught it, okay. Carla, do you have a question? Okay, make sure you unmute yourself before you ask. Is, is there a, is there an app where it can scan and, and yeah. it's able on an Apple phone? Yes, mm -hmm. just the, let's see, the notes app that looks like this, it comes okay. on the phone. You don't even have to download it if you click it. Okay. And then you start a new note. Okay. So you have your new note. There's a camera right here. Click that little camera. You'll get a box that pops up that gives you some options. You want to click scan documents and then it'll be a camera. Okay. Put the sheet on like a flat surface and then just hold it over and it will pick, it will find the sheet of paper and then you just click, oops, accidentally closed it. So right now, let's see. Okay, so I just scanned Cullen's name tag. <laughs> then I can click keep scan or retake if it's not good. And then now it's down here. Once you're done, click, it'll say ready for the next scan. So that means you can actually scan more than one document. But once you've got it all, so if you wanna do all your math homework, the front and the back and the extra sheet of paper, you can do another one. Would you please walk us through that again? I just handed my my, uh, my iPhone. Can we actually, would you mind having a Zoom meeting later this afternoon and then I can walk you through those steps? Is that okay? Sure, that's fine. Right. Okay, awesome, yes. Okay, I'll set that up through the email. I think okay, I got it. You got it, yes. Got it. And then I'll walk you through. Uh, we can have, I'll email or just email me a time after three that works for you and I can walk you through then. Is that okay? Yes, okay, cool. Okay, so any questions on turning homework in, showing independent practice, anything like that? Home or here? Carla, don't forget to mute yourself. She's going to show me later on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired. Zari, what's your question? I didn't, uh, I was showing Grande um, the camera. Okay, picture. yes, and I'll have a meeting to and show them go. later on. Um, yes, Carla, are you, do you, are you good? Do you understand now? And I'll, okay, go ahead and mute yourself. And Zari, what's your question? What, what do we do with the who am I picture? Who am I, okay. I am trying to, you know what? Uh, your mom, can she can, I don't know, because, can I set up a time, would your mom be okay um, with me setting up a time and you can leave it on your front porch and I'll grab it this weekend? Huh? She's okay. fine with that. Okay, I'll do that. So I will email her and set up a time and I'll come to your, I'll come pick it up off your porch this weekend. Okay, awesome. Any other questions about how to turn in homework or independent practice? from anybody. Okay, um, let's see. I think that might be it for math. Any questions about math at all? Oh, I'll tell you. We will, of course, have a test every time we finish. Um, that test for the first quarter, I will be telling your parents when your test is. All tests. Any subject, I will be telling your parents when tests are. After the first quarter, it will be in your planner. So that means your parents can come and check your planner for when tests are. Of course, I will be checking planners for kids at, um, kids at home. I will probably still be emailing your parents when tests are because I can't check your planners. But kids at school, in the afternoons, during before you pack up, you will have your planner open which hopefully you'll get tomorrow. Um, they're here, so I'm not sure. 
you will have your planner open. You will finish your planner. You will get everything out, and then you'll have your planner open. You will put your face shield and mask. Make sure your mask is up and over your nose, and then I will have my face shield and mask on, and I will come around and check planners to make sure, and I will initial them. I will also initial test dates so that your parents know I checked it. This is correct. Now, there are times where tests change. I will cross out my initial. You will erase it, and then um, you'll write the new test date. I'll initial it, all of that. Yes, sorry. What if us at home don't have our planner? Um, we'll get it to you, but also I'll probably be telling your parents when it is. But we'll get it to you. Um, I should have it. I may come and just deliver them to you this weekend, um, and I'll we'll, I'll drop them off on your porch. Right. But um, cause they're here, so I just have to get them. So I'm sure we'll have them by this weekend, and I can just deliver them to you on your porch. And I'll set up a time with your parents when that would be okay. Okay, any questions about planners and tests? Kingston. I just said um, I'm going to get them for you. They're from the school. So I will get it for you hopefully today or tomorrow. Carla, what's your question? Make sure to unmute yourself. My question is, um, what if we already have a planner at home and we can use it? Well, it depends. Is it separated by subject? Um, no, but is it okay if you write down the subject? Um, somebody else asked me that question. Send me a picture of what it looks like on the inside. Like, send me a picture of what a week looks like on the inside, and I'll see if it's because some planners are, um, it, it might just be a little too difficult right now but we'll see send me a picture of what the inside looks like and then I'll let you know if that, excuse me if that will work but everybody gets a planner so I'm gonna give it I'm gonna send it to everybody anyway like it comes okay. you get it everybody gets it Ethan please leave that alone scoot in and sit up please okay um ooh, IXL we will be doing IXL for every chapter the first day that we start the lesson. So um, tomorrow for chapter one, I will email your parents the list of IXL concepts. Um, it'll be anywhere from like five to seven, depending on the chapter. I try to do one IXL per lesson, but some lessons I can combine into one IXL. So there's gonna be five to seven per chapter. I will email them the first day we start the chapter or the second day, sometimes I get sidetracked, but it'll be like within the first couple days of starting the chapter, and then you will have until the test date to complete all of those IXLs with at least an 85, because that's a B. So you have to get an 85 or above SMART score in order to have it counted. Then I will average all of these scores for each lesson. That means I'll take your scores for all of the, um, each topic or sub, or I think they're called topics, on IXL and I will put them together into one grade. And so for every chapter, you'll have like chapter one IXL and you'll have a grade. Chapter two IXL, a grade. So all of those IXLs will be put together into one grade. Okay? The lower the grade on the IXL, even just one, the lower the grade, your overall grade. That's just how averages work. Um, you will also get an extra credit packet for each chapter. I will send that home about a week before the chapter, before the test. So you'll have a week to complete it. It will have a, um, a sheet for each subject. Now it's extra credit, so it is optional. It is optional. If you complete it, 100% complete it with a B. So that means an 85 to a 92. You will get three extra points on your math test. If you complete it with a 93 or above, you will get five extra points on your math test. It is not mandatory. You do not have to do it. But if you would like some extra credit or you need some extra practice, it is available to you. Any questions on IXL or the extra credit packets? Zadie, did you have a question or did you think never mind? Okay. okay. And of course, this is not the only time I'll talk about this. 
I'll be telling you more. And then when I email your parents the IXL concepts tomorrow, um, or topics, whatever they're called, I don't even know, modules, um, I will give, I will say exactly, I will tell them all of this information that I'm giving you right now so that they know. But IXL is required. If I send the IXL, they are all required. I think there's one instance the whole year where you get to choose between two IXLs, you don't, between two topics. You don't have to do both, but you have to choose one, and I will indicate that. But I think I might have fixed that so that didn't happen last year. I can't remember. So again, if I send the IXL topic home, it gets done by the test date. Otherwise, it goes in as a zero. And a zero, even if you have, so say, I'm gonna show you what happens. Say for your IXL, there are five topics. You get a 100 on four. but you don't complete the last one. This is what happens to that IXL grade. 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus zero is 400. You do not, not have to know how to do averages, but this is how I do it, so this is what happens. Then I divide 400 by the number of topics. Five goes into 40. Eight times, five times eight is 40. Oops. Three minus 40 is zero. Five goes into zero, zero. So that means even with your four 100s and your one zero, your ISL grade is an 80, which is a C. So make sure that you do not forget to do all of your IXLs. Exactly. Exactly. That also happens with never turning in homework. Because again, you could get a 100 on all of your math assignments, but you forget one and it's in the grade book as a zero because it's three months, it's not three months, but it's three weeks later and I still don't have it. It looks something like this. So make sure you get your stuff done even if you got an 80, it's still an 80, which is a C, will not affect your grade as much as a, Z, as a zero. Ah, isn't that a That's a 96 which is an A. Well, that's not too bad. Exactly. That's why, again, one bad grade, as long as you're trying your best on the rest of it, do not freak out. Because 80, you might think, oh my gosh, that's bad, that's a C. But look what happened to your grade in the end. One or two or even three bad grades, don't stress. Okay? As long as you do well, as well as you can on everything else, a couple of bad grades, won't hurt you. Does everybody understand how I grade? Any questions? Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to talk about with math. Nope, we're good. So, Zoom girls, I'll see you at 9.30 in about 20 minutes or so, a little over 20 minutes. Um, make sure to be on time. And then we will start doing rules and procedures for reading. Any questions before you go? Carla, don't forget to unmute yourself. Um, what if you, um, you don't have your math book? I, I will scan it and I'll send it to your parents. Okay. So I'll scan it, and then um, has it been ordered? It's just not here yet? Um, I'm not sure yet, but it has been ordered. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll just scan it, and I will, I'll send it to you until you get it, and then once you get it, make sure to fill, to just copy what was on the extra sheet of papers, like copy it with your pencil into your math book, 
And then once you've done that, you can get rid of those extra sheet of papers, those extra sheets of paper. Got it? Okay, Smith, what's your question? But the extra credit packets, mm -hmm. will we have to uh, turn them in to you? Yes, you'll just scan them to me. By the, and those are due by the test date, too. If you decide to do it, those are due by the okay. test date. If okay. it's possible, so with turning anything in, if it's possible, if your parents have an iPhone, this is possible to send it all to me as one document with multiple pages. That would be so helpful. If not, that's okay. But I think with the scanning app on the notes on an iPhone, um, you can do multiple pages on one thing, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Victoria. I think if, like, Smith does, like, paperwork and she needs to bring it here, I think she can come to my house and get Maybe. It if that's, if yeah, she's comfortable that. with that, that's fine, too. I'm just it's suggesting because we're super close to you. That's, if that's if that's if you guys are comfortable with that, that's fine. However, however it gets to me, as long as it gets to me by eight fifteen the next morning, that's fine. Okay. Any other questions before we go? Okay, girls. We'll see you in about twenty minutes. Bye. Miss Wallace. Miss Wallace. Yes, Carla. Um, my my granny wants to know what time. Do I need to come back? Um, at 9.30. So if you go, if he goes to the email, I sent it to your mom. If he goes to her email, I sent a um, an invitation to the reading lesson. And you no, can that click that. The question I was asking. The question I asked, you said something needs to be turned in the next morning by 8.15. Yes. What was it? Oh, no, I'm just saying any time that there's an assignment. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing, there's no homework, no math work due tomorrow. Okay. Okay. See you guys for reading.